So welcome iMasons. I'm Jeff Omelchuk, one of two executive directors here at iMasons. Uh, and I'm here in beautiful San Jose at the OCP Global Summit. And with me here are uh, James Thomason, CTO of EdgeX, and John Cowan, CEO of EdgeX. And they're here to announce the launch of an exciting new venture that, that we'll get into, they'll tell you more about. Uh, but before we get into that, I just wanted to give each of you a chance to introduce yourself and. Tell us a little bit about the journey that brought you to be standing here at OCP. Uh, James, do you want to go first? Sure. Hi, my name is James Thomason. Uh, as you said, I'm the CTO of EdgeX uh, and co-founder. I've been here in Silicon Valley building startup companies for some 20 years, basically since I was a child. Um, building infrastructure and infrastructure related pro products is literally the only thing I know how to do. Cool. And John? Th yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm John Cowan, uh, the CEO of EdgeX. Uh, so, the last decade or so, I've been uh, focused on the thesis that um, all of compute should operate uh, like a ubiquitous utility and be potentially even traded like a commodity one day. And that's a, uh, that's a thesis that's consumed a lot of, uh, lot of time and energy over the years. And uh, we're here today to, to announce our next venture in that, uh, in that progression towards uh, the IT utility. We call it EdgeX. So the theme of this year's uh uh, OCP Summit is open together and uh, iMasons is pleased to be collaborating with OCP at the conference. Uh, it's just getting started, but one of the things that I, uh, I've been struck with is uh, just looking at the program, the number of uh, things related to uh, talks and products related to uh, uh, liquid cooling and immersion cooling. Do you think that's an up and coming thing in, uh, in the space? We do. I think so. I spent uh, some time with Submer, which I think is probably the coolest product that I've seen uh, at the show so far. Uh, being able to do uh, immersion cooling with a biodegradable um, uh, oil. Electrolyte? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah dielectric oil um, that doesn't go bad, can be repurposed, used over and over again. It's just, just very, very cool. And I was asking them about you know how to set it up and tear it down and how hard it is for them to move that thing around. It is. Uh, I think a couple thousand pounds, uh, or about a thousand pounds, sitting on the on the floor, but um, still very very cool. Carry on luggage, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> overhead exactly. bin. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't know. <laughs> um, well, I'm Masons uh, maintains an advisory council that includes the heads of infrastructure for some of the largest hyperscale companies, and we frequently ask them, you know, what are they concerned about? What's top of mind? And something that's been they've been real consistent about in the last you know a uh, couple of years. Uh, has been, you know, how do they sustain the rate of growth? And often one of their focuses is, is um, uh, maintaining the people they need to run their businesses. Uh, but EdgeX is focusing on, on other things uh, to try to support that growth. And I, James, in your talk yesterday, you gave some, some uh, growth statistics that, I, that just caught my eye. So I think you said that the, uh, 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 the number of connected internet devices is, is expected to triple from 2019 to 2025 to, to over 75 billion devices. And the amount of data will increase 5x from 520 zettabytes today to over two yottabytes. Yottabytes. So how on earth are we going to find the, you know, the hardware and the money and the capital uh, and, the, and the bandwidth to support this rate of growth? And that's why I wanted to talk with you guys because I think you've got a plan uh, to do this. So yeah. tell us about it. This is one of those areas, rare circumstances, where I think that um, the hype is merited by the reality. In fact, I think the growth of edge computing is going to be uh, a lot larger than most people have anticipated. Yeah. You know, um, having lived through uh, two generations of, uh, <laughs> of internet infrastructure now, I think that this, this new platform is going to dwarf everything that's come before. And uh, one of the biggest challenges with that is just the amount of capital that's going to be necessary to build the level of edge infrastructure that we need because devices are going to get a lot smaller, but we're at the end of Moore's Law, so they're not going to get a lot smarter, right? And so we, we see the edge as being um, an area between public cloud and uh, all of these billions of IoT devices that's going to grow and scale horizontally into the, the millions and even tens of millions of devices. Um, we think that it's not like edge is going to replace cloud. Edge and, edge and cloud are going to grow uh, both exponentially over the next few years, but I think edge is going to grow much, much more. And um, 
we're creating a technology that creates this ephemeral uh, layer using standard protocols, uh, all secured by blockchain so that all these small devices, mobile devices, et cetera, can um, tap into nearby computing capacity to carry out their tasks. So we actually, uh, so it's funny, James and I go back a little ways to his days at Dell, and we had this conversation back in, I think it was 20, late 2014, early 2015, about you know, where the market would need to go in order to be able to serve this demand. And um, you know, we had started a research project about 18 months ago, um, you know, looking at different ways to try and solve that problem from an engineering and a technical perspective. And you know, we, we became um, serious believers in the concept of decentralization and what that could represent as a potential foundation to be able to distribute compute to the edge. And when we, when we perfected the prototype behind EdgeX, one of the first calls I made was to James, because I remembered that conversation back in Round Rock. Um, and I said, hey man, I think, I think we might be onto something. And that was the genesis of the collaboration. Interesting. So, uh, so, so a lot of people are chasing the edge. I mean, it's an area of huge growth, and you know, everybody recognizes that it's sort of the hot topic. But what makes and so there's a lot of solutions, a lot of people, you know, addressing that market. What makes EdgeX different and special? A couple of things. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that capital is a big challenge to deploy enough edge infrastructure to meet the the projected demands. And uh, one of the things that we're we're doing is to repurpose. Uh, existing computing equipment that's already been deployed inside of hyperscale facilities. So we ha we're introducing new form factors together with our partner IT Renew uh, that are suitable for edge computing. And so creating this circular economy effect to um, repurpose existing infrastructure as opposed to throwing off all of that infrastructure. We're talking, I think IT Renew said 346,000 tons of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of equipment that gets thrown off uh, every year. Um, is a huge part of this in being able to do it in a way that is uh, both environmentally friendly but is also going to meet capacity. I think if you try to do this with um, brand new solutions, brand new infrastructure, A, it's not necessary, and B, it's hugely, hugely wasteful considering the amount of infrastructure that we now have and is being replaced you know, at the hyperscalers. Well, and from a centralization perspective, the velocity of delivering services is, is next to impossible. I think, it, I think it's going to be very difficult for the you know, the, the hyperscalers in our industry to be able to reach down as close to where the device is in order to provide compute processing power. And so doing this uh, again on a, on, a, on a decentralized sort of peer-to-peer -peer basis allows us to kind of step out of trying to be an intermediary or a middleman in all of this and simply connect the developers with the operators or producers of infrastructure um, so that, um, you know, compute is delivered, you know, where it's needed, when it's needed in a, in a, a nanosecond. But one of the other questions I had related to all the other people that are pursuing uh, edge compute uh, s solutions, um, uh, how do you, are they, uh, are they competitors uh, for this space? Do they fit within your vision of the, well, the edge network? Only if they want to be. Yeah. Right? Uh, maybe, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's the Canadian in me, Jeff, I don't know. But uh, you know, our, our message to anybody that is focused on edge infrastructure is come into the community. Right? There's no, you, you should have nothing to hide. Come and join us. Um, you know, uh, add your infrastructure to the network. Um, we're not, you know, although we've started with, uh, with OCP and IT Renew and, and what have you, this is about global infrastructure and sustainability and, and less about walled gardens and silos, the way we used to do things. Yeah, we've, we've estimated, uh, as you saw yesterday in my presentation, that uh, if you were doing edge infrastructure over the next 10 years with new stuff, we're talking about 60.2 or 62.5 trillion dollars of infrastructure. So there's plenty of room for multiple multiple participants. No one size is going to fit all. Uh, and again, as John says, our, our goal is to create an open platform uh, that everyone can participate in and carve out their little piece of the edge. So you you said something interesting that uh, caught my you know my attention uh, that uh, that. EdgeX isn't going to be the middleman in Correct. this. So, wh what's the business model, or you know, what what is EdgeX's role in deploying your your technology? Well, it's 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 an it's an open platform. At the end of the day, we you know at, you know from our perspective from our perspective, being able to connect again uh, on a peer to peer basis, producers and consumers, you know, a, 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 to do a um, to uh, uh, effect a a direct transaction is is really sort of the uh, you know the sort of meat on the bones behind the model as an open system as an open model but you know again like other open uh, platforms other open companies um, you know building that creates a tremendous amount of opportunities uh, we've got a, a world-class team with a lot of expertise to help build this out um, from the ground up but we're also you know we're also eyeing you know the next generation 
uh, commercial systems that ride on top of things like blockchain. Um, we'll, uh, we'll make subsequent announcements later this year and into 2020 about that, but we believe that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, decentralization also represents a way to help uh, the supply chain monetize their services equally. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of wrap my head around it. So um, IT Renew has access to, uh, through the Sesame project, has access to all this used hardware, right. uh, lightly used hardware in, most, in almost all cases. Yep. Um, uh, how, do, uh, how does EdgeX you know, get your hands on that? Are you building the, the, the servers out of the repurposed product? Do, do people buy them from you? Uh, how, do they, how do they get deployed, installed somewhere? Who, who, you know, who does that and what's EdgeX's role in that? Sure. you want to explain fabrication? And sure, so, so importantly, three important things to understand is that uh, EdgeX is not selling hardware and we're not selling software, right? Mm -hmm. So our, our monetization strategy is based purely on utilization. And one of the things that's unique about us is by using blockchain, we're able to digitize uh, and tokenize all of the assets that we're deploying on the network. And that means that the owners, the original owners of the infrastructure in question can the participate, hyper the hyperscalers can participate uh, in the recurring revenue stream you know, right off of top line. So we can take different parts of the revenue stream uh, and different parts of the cost structure and allocate them to different parties, right? And in that way we can create a federated, if you will, a community right, yeah. Yeah, that, is, the, that is creating the, this computing the, platform. The tagline, when we sat around the table and said, man, like, what, you know, how, do we, how do we sort of capture what we've created in one sentence? We said the community is the cloud, right? The idea that everybody participates in the network and on the network as a, both a producer and a consumer is a revolutionary concept. And we believe that this is how you scale for the, the what we, I mean, you know, insert here moniker you want to use, whether it's internet 3.0, cloud 3.0, we don't get the next generation of how we do connected things in a, in a connected world on the internet. That drives part of our reason, by the way, to do this with, with serverless, at least initially, because we see serverless as the next computing paradigm that's going to drive application development for the next few years. It also allows us to do this in a way that is open and standards compliant so that any, any old device out there can leverage the computing fabric versus other technologies, some of the blockchain purist technologies which require specialized software libraries or protocols underneath uh, in order to access the computing fabric in a, in a, a fog-like way. Our stuff is all based on HTTP and, and serverless right at the edge. And that's, it's actually a really important use case. You know, one of the things that we, we make a habit of when you're, when you're, whenever you're doing something that's a game changer like this, you have to go out and talk to folks to make sure that you're not crazy. Well, maybe you're crazy, but not too crazy. <laughs> and uh, I know I was, I'll speak for myself, I'm, I'm absolutely nuts. But, um, you know, we, we went out and talked to partners and customers about this kind of stuff. And, you know, one of the things we discovered is that, you know, in one use case, we, uh, one of our partners designs, um, you know, uh, high-end data science, machine learning algorithms in the oil and gas market. And, you know, only a fraction of their code they can use in a serverless framework. Why? Because, you know, the hyperscaler is too far away from where this stuff needs to be, uh, where the functions need to be executed from a serverless standpoint. So the short equ equation for them was, man, if I could extend functions as a service to where I need to compute, that's a game changer for them. That's, that's going to help them um, deliver uh, more solutions faster to the market. It seems the cash flow is uh, managing kind of the economics of the sy system yes. is massively complex. How do you manage all that? And, and is from an earlier conversation, I remember you said that the, the people that own the, the, the property, you know, where the, where the little server's installed, uh, they get a fraction of the revenue. Yeah. You know, they're being compensated for that. The hyperscaler providing the, the servers inside it, they're being compensated. Right. You guys get a little piece of the pie. Um, uh, how do you manage all that? Um, it's all done through automatically through the chain. So we have smart contracts on the blockchain uh, where counterparties can enter into uh, different relationships with one another. So today we're standardizing those smart contracts for the early participants in the network, but we certainly envision a future where counterparties can independently negotiate smart contracts and implement them on the network so that they can uh, come to revenue models and you know, cost models that make the most sense for those particular parties. And part of the idea here is that it is a federated network and we do want to have global capacity, but we want um, individual organizations to be able to set up these constellations of, uh, or cooperatives of, of computing fabric where, in and where, wherever it makes sense for them.
Examples of that might be oil and gas or between uh, mobile carriers or telcos, et cetera, where it makes sense for them. Yeah, there will be naturally forming ecosystems, but, but the way to actually do this at scale, and this is, this is, these are the lessons that came out of what I'll call a first generation blockchain um, experience. Um, you know, the beauty of blockchain is, is keeping score in a trustless way where you don't have to trust me, Jeff, I'm not the central bank, right? Um, uh, consensus is reached across the network for, you know, is, you know, is the record true or not? And so doing that and being able to parse that out across how, you know, n number of potential uh, participants in the supply chain um, is really what makes the, the economic model really exciting. I think it's a fascinating uh, use case to use, again, repurposed servers uh, in a, uh, you know, meshless uh, or you know, serverless mesh, uh, it's a fa fascinating idea. One of the things I really like about it is sort of the environmental and, and sustainability implications. In a, a past life, uh, I was a deeper into that. And one of the things I remember uh, is that for many types of electronic products, the uh, energy impact and sustainability impact of manufacture exceeds that of the, act the product's actual use. Uh, and, there, and that's usually not the case for servers, but for some classes of electronics it is. So uh, by extending the use life of a product, you're just amortizing that environmental impact of production over a longer you know, use life. So doubling the use life halves the environmental impact per, you know, of the product. And uh, uh, you guys are creating a machine to uh, you know, extend the use life of these server assets over multiple lifetimes, which I think is uh, is a, a great idea. Yeah, this is, the sustainability angle is important to us. You know, just I mean, just being as constituents in the industry and and being in this business for a long time, we, we see it. I mean, we you know, and as citizens of Earth, as the yeah, citizens of Earth, I mean, you know, we you know, we built uh, you know businesses in the past, you know, that that quantified statistically how much waste was going on inside of the hyperscale data centers and general IT operations and it's staggering and so you know that was part of the original thesis behind edgex was it was how do we help to kind of capitalize on what is being wasted what's not being used you know in a in a programmatic fashion because i mean why why continue to throw more coal on the fire if you can if you can extend the burner longer right yeah, exactly. exactly i mean it's a pretty basic problem we're trying to solve yeah and a clever way to do it so uh how can uh uh, so what products uh, is, is EdgeX putting out? You, you talked yesterday in one of the talks about uh, an Edge pod, but I think you also said that you, you wouldn't be uh, selling the products. So maybe you could talk about the products and tell, and tell me, so whose products are they? Or, you know. <laughs> this, is, this is the part where you go, it's all free, James. Yeah, all free. <laughs> <laughs> so there, in terms of the physical products, there are two form factors we're introducing the market right now. One is based on the discovery uh, chassis, which you saw Sesame introduce yesterday, which is the first off-the-shelf sort of like um, server that an enterprise could, could purchase. In our case, uh, our customers and those who are interested in hosting Edge Pods can deploy those at no cost, no upfront cost, so they pay for them on an ongoing basis whenever utilization occurs on the Edge node. We also have a, um, an outdoor form factor, which is based on a uh, rugged pod design also uh, from Sesame today. And we're in the process of developing a number of other form factors that are specific to certain use cases that we're pursuing and early adoption in the market, um, including 5G and other use cases. So the idea is that um, in, in all of the above, uh, you can deploy edge infrastructure without a huge upfront capital expense. You can call EdgeX uh, through our partners, we'll come in, deploy the infrastructure, uh, you pay for it as you use it. Uh, one of my follow-up questions was going to be, so when is this available? Uh, so uh, you're announcing today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, good. <laughs> right around the corner, uh, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so people can call EdgeX today and say, I, I want to put a little uh, uh, edge pod on my, you know, in, in my server closet Absolutely. here uh, under my Starbucks or, you know. Wherever. Yeah. To be, to be crystal clear, the hardware is going to be available starting in July, okay. uh, early early to mid-June at the earliest, but it's looking like July is going to be uh, the ship date for both um, the Discovery chassis as well as the Outdoor Edge pods. Later this year, we'll be introducing a new form factor, which is uh, smaller than either of those, has fewer computing nodes and uh, a new wireless technology on board. Uh, that probably won't become generally available until the first quarter of, of next year at the earliest. So we, we chose this event to come out from stealth because ultimately, um, you know, we're beginning to take uh, placement orders for EdgePods um, so that when we hit the ground running and, and launch Alpha, 
again, alpha, very controlled environment. Um, uh, you know, it will begin with a footprint. It will begin with uh, with a, a network. Oh, I should I should have been clear. You know, if if we're not talking about these smaller edge pods, the and it's traditional open compute, you can call us right now, and we'll be happy to bring as much open compute as you would like uh, into a traditional facility. But in terms of the small edge pods, you mentioned a rugged pod. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that. So, rugged pod is a uh, is an open compute project. Uh, it was started by, I believe, Horizon Computing. Uh, it was a community-funded project, and uh, they've contributed the designs back into the Open Compute project. So it is a, uh, a 14 by 14 by 15 inch cube that is immersion cooled. It uses a micro ITX form factor. So in that case, we reuse most of the components from Open Compute, except for the board itself. Uh, we're working on a new design that is uh, based purely on the Open Compute modules. Um, but that, that design's been tested and deployed um, fairly widely, I think, in, in, uh, in Europe. And so it is similar to Submer. It is a, um, a biodegradable or non-toxic um, dielectric oil base. It's a completely sealed box. Everything you need is in there. Uh, weatherproof, it's a high albedo reflective surface suitable to deploy to rooftops or other uh, kind of hostile outdoor environments. Fascinating. So it's fun to think about you know, populating uh, the world with these things uh, that are all repurposed, uh, you know, hyperscale assets uh, and connected in the mesh, as you talked about. Well, I think this is fascinating. So, uh, uh, what are the next steps for you guys, and how can uh, iMason's members get involved and help? Well, we, we plan to, as I've, I've said before, Jeff, we plan to take a very active um, uh, role and, and position within uh, Masons going forward. I mean, as a as a member from day one uh, of Infrastructure Masons, you know, I've been a, a stout believer in uh, the vision and the mission behind it. And uh, so, you know, we'll plan to take an active role and, and, you know, we'd like to unveil, you know, some of the products and services that uh, EdgeX releases in 2019 and beyond uh, through the Masons group. So beginning to be, you know, active, active dialogues in the community organizations underneath Masons, sub, uh, subgroups, what have you, uh, Edge Masons. Um, uh, we think is, uh, you know, we think is uh, an important uh, place for us to have these conversations and collaborate with our peers. I'd just like to say what a cool organization I think Infrastructure Masons is. Uh, so anything else you want to get out? Uh, just, you know, edgex.io, uh, sign up for the alpha release. Um, uh, sign up to, uh, to host and take edge pods if you like, and um, looking forward to working with the community. John, thanks very much. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate James. Time. Thanks so much, Jeff. Pleasure. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs>